we're here. I'm so excited to see your faces. I just want to welcome everyone. I'm Caitlin Vargas. I am the Startup Community Director for Onward Eugene, and we have a great day ahead of us. Uh, welcome to Diversity and Brand, Inclusive Marketing for Entrepreneurs. And of course, this is aspiring entrepreneurs, experienced entrepreneurs, or just people who want to learn more about branding and marketing. Happy you're all here. Um, I just want to start off today. This is an hour long workshop. We have two different um, presenters today. I want to start off with Marty Gator, who also was our DJ in the beginning of this workshop. Uh, so Marty, you know, he, he's, he does all the things. His current passion is building, growing, and connecting long-term business and personal relationships. He's an Air Force veteran. He's an amateur stand-up comedian. As you just heard, he's a DJ, and he's held various positions in the entertainment business, television news, marketing, and public relations. He currently teaches business interpersonal, in, intrapersonal communications, and he works actively to help people maintain and grow relationships in their companies. Marty is locally recognized for his work, rebuilding struggling networking groups and repairing broken lines of communication within large organizations. Highly encourage you to check out Marty on LinkedIn. Our other presenter today is Mark. Mark Nugent is the Senior Director of Business Development for Comcast Oregon Southwest Washington region. And he has more than two decades of experience, including engineering, finance, mergers and acquisitions, strategy, product planning, and business development. So quick round of applause for Marty and Mark. <laughs> okay. I, had, I, didn't have, I didn't have a sound effect uh, <laughs> ready to play. Should have told me. <laughs> Thanks, Caitlin. So, so again, I want to thank Onward Eugene and the Chamber and also, uh, of course, our partners at Comcast because they're the ones that sponsor a lot of this. And of course, I wanna thank all of you for being here because without you guys, I'd have zero audience. I'd be talking to myself, but I'm the youngest of four. So that's never a problem. Now, why am I here? That's actually interesting because like really right now, my main business focus is diversity. It's not really diversity, it's actually accessibility. That's where I am right now. I'm working in the digital accessibility space but I have a whole past career working in marketing and advertising, as you'll see above my shoulder here. I'm the guy that has the Emmy. I don't really get a chance to talk about that very often because I haven't worked in the space, but I loved the space. It was something that I didn't leave because I hated it. I just wanted to leave before I hated it. Um, diversity and marketing, putting a label on, telling a story. Why I love it so much is because you get a chance to do it in little seven second increments because you know, they say this, you know, people have like a seven second attention span, right? So for me, that was the big draw getting into that is like, what kind of story can I tell? What kind of thing can I do in like seven seconds? And I also think about it from a standpoint of giving back. Long before we even started talking about this diversity and uh, inclusion and all the things, all these buzzwords that have started coming up now over the last couple of years, I started my career working with Gannett Corporation. Um, show of hands, who's heard of them? Anybody heard of Gannett in the room? Anybody? No? USA Today, they own a bunch of media properties. And when I started, uh, I worked for a Gannett property back in Denver, uh, KUSA. And Gannett actually had made the big desire to change how they delivered news content. They actually recognized that what they were delivering was too biased towards, on the negative side, towards the black community. And they recognized that they didn't have enough uh, minorities and leadership positions in nearly every division in their, their print media, their broadcast media. They knew they had to make a change. And so I was one of the per people that was selected to go into what they called a producer in, in training program. So what they did is they picked select minorities to go through a training program with no guarantee of a job, but just train them in a certain position in management and possibly move up. No guarantee, but I was actually lucky, lucky to get a chance to go to Minneapolis where I won Miami. And it was always my mindset at some point that I'd like to be able to continue to pass that torch if the chance ever came up. And look where I am. 
2021. We're still talking about this. But what I'd like to know more than anything is, you know, the, I would say like maybe if anything, we can go to the whiteboard. Why are you guys here? So anybody want to chime in? Kind of a question. I'm curious. What brings you guys here? Because I can sit here and talk all day. As I was saying before, I'm the youngest of four. I'm used to talking to myself, but I like to make this interactive. What brings you guys here? Hey, Marty, Matt Sayer here. Hey, Matt. Uh, I'm here to listen and to learn uh, at the core of what Onward Eugene is up to is uh, making economic prosperity inclusive. And I recognize that uh, I'm not a de facto expert in this. And so I, I like to hear from people who have uh, lived experience. And so I'm here to learn. Great, great. And that's a good point, Matt, because I think what I always learn in these kind of forums is being able to speak up and ask the questions and have the tough conversations. It starts with forums like this. Now, realistically, we're not gonna be able to cover everything today, but it starts with forums like this. So just having the conversation is a good start. Anyone else? Okay. I'm here so for you, Marty. Oh, <laughs> is that, is that Saban? <laughs> yep, I heard you were speaking and I signed right up. Yeah, I got a fan club. All right, checks in the mail. Checks in the mail. Um, let's have next question. What do you know? Does anybody have any marketing experience? Okay, so I'm surprised because honestly, we all have marketing experience. We are marketing ourselves every single solitary day. We go from job to job. Now, literally, this, this whole mindset of this workshop is about entrepreneurs, right? And I love entrepreneurs because we have one unique product. Our one unique product is ourselves, right? There's nothing like us anywhere else. We are constantly marketing ourselves. And that brand that we pull, we pull out of ourselves a lot of times is something that no one's ever seen anywhere, right? It's something that we thought of. I, I love working with entrepreneurs more than anything else because it's that excitement. Something popped up. Something just came out of their head. And they're like, oh, got to go. Got to go. I want to do this. I'm going to show you a couple of marketing 101 oops. I'm going to call these marketing oops 101s. I just, I'm gonna, I got a video. Bear with me because there's one in particular I have to show that kind of, again, brings us back to the forefront. I stole it from YouTube, but it really speaks to the mindset of thinking about things before you go too far. Number three, the Trek store, I beat blacks. More often than- Human beings are natural storytellers. The purpose of storytelling- And not, a poorly named product doesn't hurt anyone but the investors. But when a successful seller of MP3 players, Trek store, released the newest model of their popular I beat line, and named it Blacks, people were understandably shocked and seriously offended. It was clearly a mistake on the part of the German company. What sane marketing department would intentionally commit brand suicide by invoking racial violence? But so again, um, but it's the whole point behind this is just again to relate, if I can say anything as far as a uh, takeaway, for today, um, I will say this is if you could do anything at all before you even think about uh, branding or uh, takeaway message form today is, uh, let's say, start from current slide. The one takeaway that I can give you today if you're thinking about marketing and diversity and inclusion, just think first before marketing because you can't undo the wrong message. And that's really where I was going with, uh, obviously a lot of those, those messages are over the top. Um, a lot were kind of, you know, maybe a little too much for this afternoon. I apologize if uh, they went a little too far for peeps. Uh, but literally the point being is somebody somewhere thought those were a good idea. There have been other companies that have actually, uh, that are larger companies that actually thought things would work. 
uh, by throwing something out like that. More established companies, Time Magazine did this once. They uh, did their man of the year. They said, what is evil on their cover? And they put the color black on their cover, not thinking how that would polarize every person of color across the country, not knowing what that actually meant. So it always comes down to the mindset, think about what that message is going to be. Now, what can you do? There's some things to think about as marketing has gone over the course of the year, over the course of the years, and where it really relates to. I try to relate it to what I think about, again, from the entrepreneur's, entrepreneur's mindset to like an artist or like fashion. It's like something that they own, something that's creative, something that gets that wow factor. So you think about what is that idea you're having and who's it for? Who's that target audience? Who, you, who are you trying to get? Why is it important now? And then how, you, how are you getting the message out? I think back in the day, it was really simple. It was word of mouth. Did you hear about this, hear about that? Have you seen, have you seen? Now, also why the conversations changed is grapevine versus social media. The grapevine changed over the decades. First we had print, you know, read it in the newspaper. Then we had radio, then television. Then you had all these different types of ways to track all these types of, of audiences. You know, you could track age and race and where they're all at. It was very simple to, take, to, to just pinpoint that sort of thing whenever you were launching your business. You could be very specific and target everywhere you wanted to go. Quantitative information, very simple to get a hold of. Unfortunately, and fortunately, the internet got big. What was it, Al Gore invented that back in the early 80s? Is that what he said? But now with qualitative, it's not that easy to do anymore. Because you don't really know who's in front of that computer anymore. You don't know what that demographic is. You're starting out this product. Do you know who your, your primary demo is? with that product? Do you know what that marketing mix is going to be? One of the main reasons why I, when I stepped out of marketing and got into the sales part of working in the media, I stepped out of it altogether because it was too hard for me to pinpoint where my customer's like, focus was going to be. You know, the, the standard big three TV, radio, and print were saying, well, you have to tell these customers that we have this many people watching us or reading us or listening to us. And I couldn't, in my brain, honestly say, yes, this is where all your people are going to be. Because I knew there was this thing called the internet that, I don't know, well, actually I said, for, well, first there's internet and there's TiVo. So I don't know if they're actually going to be watching these commercials to begin with. The one thing I think about when it comes to your ability to actually do ad buys, you can do this on the internet. People talk about, do I buy uh, advertising on, uh, on Facebook? Should I buy Facebook ads? Should I do this? I won't ever say it's a bad idea to do. It depends on why you're doing it. If you're trying to do it to do what television did, back in the day, there's an equation called reach and frequency. Who are you trying to get to and how often are you trying to get to them? The more you get to them and how often you get to them, the message sticks. But because you never really truly know who is actually sitting there in front of that, that computer, reach and frequency isn't the same. However, they can give you an idea through targeting where they can send those ads to who they think will be in front of the computer where you can maybe get a sampling of who is responding to your ads. But I wouldn't use that as a mindset of, okay, I'm getting a good response. I'm gonna always do it here. It'd be great for sampling. Also focus groups. That's probably the best way nowadays to go. Before you do anything broad, bring it back smaller. Now, I always look at that from a standpoint of where I was back in television when we did have Nielsen. We look at it from a standpoint of, look, let's take a smaller sample size of the overall population of what we're doing. Let's bring the smaller sample size together, a cross section of that sample size, show them what we're gonna market, 
get their response, whether or not, and that'll tell us whether this is, this is a good thing to do. You can do that same thing with any product that you're bringing to market. You can take a cross section of where you think you wanna go, put it in front of people, test it out, get their response, see how they feel. Something else I also wanna talk about when it comes to what your, what your plan is. There's two types that I look at when it comes to what you're doing, when it comes to the brand itself. When you're doing the marketing, are you doing a proof of performance or are you trying to stay top of mind? Two very different types of when you're launching yourself into that marketplace. Are you trying to say, I am so cool and look, this is why I'm so cool. Look at what we've done. It is that cool. Or are you just trying to say, when you have this problem, I want you to remember to make sure that I'm the first person you talk to. Those are very important things to think about when you're actually launching yourself because if you don't have that established, you're going to run into the wall of, is this the right marketing mix that I'm in? You're gonna be sending the wrong message, the wrong call to action. So think about from that standpoint, am I trying to prove how cool I am or am I just staying top of mind as I'm getting out into the marketplace? Brand types are important as well because you can actually end up oversaturating your, your high-end brand and it ends up being picked up by a low end. For example, if you've got like a Ferrari type brand that ends up getting put in the wrong channel of communication, you'll have someone pick it up that may not be the, your target market. And that ends up diluting your, your brand and you'll have the wrong people looking at the brand. Now, wrong people, the wrong people in my mindset is goes back to your overall goal. What are you trying to do? Who is your market? What are you trying to get? This goes back to the points I have right after. Watch out for trolls, except that some people may not be happy. But the more important thing is the context in which you're trying to get that message out there. Whatever you're putting out, whatever you're trying to say, it's the context itself that's the most important. I always use the example, and I, I, I hate to keep, always pick on McDonald's, but if, if anybody ever watched TV throughout the 90s, you would think that the only place black people ate in the 90s was McDonald's, because every McDonald's commercial, we were at McDonald's. That's all the place McDonald's that black people ate was McDonald's. But there was no other context that that's just where we ate. You turn on a commercial, that's where we were. But I, for a fact, know we ate other places. You have to think about your intention of what you're trying to do. And it's the intention of what message you're trying to put out that affects that overall perception. Before you start saying anything, before you put together where you're going to go, what that mix is going to be, before you even decide what strategy I'm gonna take, am I going to actually look at this as a, uh, uh, a, a, a Facebook campaign? Or am I gonna go and do this on Instagram? Am I gonna go do a focus group? Am I gonna go walk the street and do samples with people? What is my intention? Because if you don't have the right intention, that's when things get sketchy. People start wondering, why are you here? What are you trying to accomplish? What are you trying to do? So there is one little quote that I'd like to share with you. It's from a wise man. Possession may be nine-tenths of the law, but other people's perceptions of what you do, say, try, or attempt is 100% of their reality. And you can't argue with another person's perception because it belongs to them. This, uh, it belongs to them. The wise marketer shapes and influences perception through the nature of their intention. The truer the intention, the better the perception in the end. You guys know who said that? Any, any, any guess? Yeah, I did. It was me. Oh, I'm the wise guy. See, I'm at that age now where I can actually be the wise man. 
<laughs> yeah, Cassie, Cassie's a party gator. All right, so that's that's really all I have because again, we we only have an hour. I definitely want to leave time for Comcast, but I also want to leave time for Q and A because again, I want to make this interactive versus me just talking. There's so many things that we could cover, but really, I want to open the floor up for questions, interactions, uh, thoughts. Uh, so, anybody. Marty Shabon had a question in the chat. Shabon, do you want to unmute and ask your question? Sure. So um, Marty, with the focus groups and trying to reach a, a, a diverse group of people so we can get as many viewpoints as possible, how would you suggest we go about finding the diverse group of people? How do you find a focus group? That's diverse. That will give us enough um, opinions so we don't end up alienating the culture <laughs> yeah well i think the first thing you do is you, you go through the chamber right the chamber has access to you know demographics right that's one place uh, i would say definitely the city and county they have demographics as far as different groups different where the different clusters of people are um i know for a fact there's different festivals there's different things that happen every year here in eugene that blow me away an asian festival was is that just happened or is about to happen at um, alton baker park so it's just doing a little legwork to get a hold of where these organizations are and then just getting a hold of the people that run these groups and say this is what i'm doing would you mind being a part of it I would also add that I think with the pandemic, we learned that we can do so many more things than we knew we could do before, especially with all the technology that we have, the ability that we have to be virtual. Uh, how can you reach out to networks probably even beyond uh, your neighborhood, your city, your town, your county, your states? How can you reach out to others and leverage our technology to, to bring those insights in? Um, here's a good thing. Uh, literally, it's actually kind of funny. I actually was uh, referred to someone who's moving here from Atlanta through three different connections. And uh, we're talking on the phone and I like, I don't even know how you got a hold of me. They wanted to know what Oregon was like. I didn't even know this is a black lady moving from Atlanta. She was trying to get an idea of what it was like here. And it took us about 15 minutes into the conversation to figure out how she got to me. But she, we got referred by three different connections had put us together. So it's a matter of using that virtual connection and not being afraid to refer people, use the internet. I think as I've talked to people since the way this whole pandemic thing has gone down, I personally look at it as a benefit. It's given people the reason to actually use it as an aid, as a tool versus something to run away from. Uh, a lot of times we haven't been as active using it as we should or we could. You know, I have always looked at technology as a facilitator to communication versus a barrier. And it is a great facilitator. I think literally being able to get on Facebook, throw up a question in, in a public forum. There's lots of different ways you can just put up a question like in an Instagram message or wherever you can find a forum. Like I just joined a group called um, ONAMI. It's an Oregon Association of Minority Entrepreneurs. It's out of Portland. I didn't know about this group. I have been here for 15 years. I just found out about this group three months ago. And so and I found that out through networking. So literally, there's a lot of different ways just by networking, people can connect you to groups. And I'd be happy to share that information for ONAMI if people are, are curious about that group as well. Thanks for answering that, Marty. I also want to point out that Saban was actually the one who um, uh, said, hey, you should talk to this guy, Marty. And I go, that sounds like a great idea. And so <laughs> even within this group, um, you know, people are making referrals. And then also on the technology front, there's something called Meetup that um, you right. can, you know, essentially put in your location and what you're interested in and be connected to groups that way as well. Meetup's a, Meetup's a great app too, because it literally is searchable and it, it pops up with the topic, right? And Marty, we have two more questions in the chat. Um, oh, okay, let me take a look. So John asked, how do you spell the group's name? 
And then Siobhan asked, is it customary to pay the participants of a focus group? Uh, which group are we talking about? Probably the Onami, Onami is that right? Oh, Onami, oh, okay. Um, let's see. I think they allow you to visit and it is a $200 a year membership if you join, but they do allow for a visit. And again, I can get, uh, tell you what, I'm gonna give you all my contact information. Just shoot me an email and I will make sure I will shoot you the how to register and get that information. I'll put my contact information here in the chat so you can follow up with me and I can make sure you get that because I don't have, I thought I had it somewhere to pop right up, but email me and I'll get that to you. And Marty Saban asked, is it customary to pay the participants of a focus group? Um, Gosh, that's, that is kind of a, it's kind of a gray area because you want them to be as impartial as possible. So I've done it both ways. I'll put it that way. Um, there have been times when I was living in Minneapolis, we'd bring in focus groups when we were in sweeps and we wanted to check to see what stories would work in that marketplace. And if we knew we had a, like a slew of stories, we wanted them to respond. They would actually sit there with um, little response meters and they would like turn, like to the left was I'm bored, to the right I'm excited. So it would give us a reading as they were going through to tell us where they're at. And we would play, it would be like two to three hours of stories. So we would actually pay them a stipend and feed them depending on how long they were there. If it was just like a short hit, it would we we wouldn't we would just you know say hey thanks and give them some free swag. Um, so I think it just depends on I look at again intention. Time is the only non-renewable resource that people are sharing with us. So I go I again yeah, every time I try to interact like you guys have all giving me like part of your day today and I I hope to my core that I'm giving you something to take with you because you don't get this time back. My intention was hopefully to give you something that you can work with and build from. So that's the way I would want you to work with a focus group is if I know I'm taking this time from them, what can they take with them? Do I need to give them something to take with them to make it worth their while? Does that make sense? We've got a few more questions popping up. Um, okay. Ashley you said, Oami is a great trade show every year. So thank you, Ashley. And then I'll read Summer's question for everyone. So okay. Summer asked, what do you recommend in terms of more informally getting feedback on campaigns or content to ensure it either doesn't offend someone or on the flip side resonates without continually going back to the people of color in, internally in your organization? Because that can just seem like an unfair expectation. Okay, let me read. I'm gonna read that again. What do you recommend in terms of? Okay, so to the first point, um, and this was from from Summer. Summer, I'm sorry, it's impossible to not offend somebody. That's the first part. It goes back to my point. There's always going to be someone that's going to be offended. That's the that's the unfortunate side of it. Um, and then when it comes to uh, continually going back to people of color, the organization which seems like an unfair ex expectation, it goes back to my point of intention. Um, I'll use a personal example with this. Someone had me help them with uh, providing some, some information or some insight on what white, white privilege was and what my feeling was when it comes to business and marketing and this sort of thing. And then I wanted them to give me their side in another forum. And then they just never showed up. So I wanted to have a one-to-one -one conversation with them as how I felt they just kind of left me hanging. And they actually got defensive initially because they felt like I was getting angry with them because they didn't, you know, talk to me. And I said, but see, here's the problem. The fact that I can't share the problem with you is, is a reason why I think it's white privilege. Because realistically, 
I should be able to be upset with you and you should be able to say, that was not my intent. And I should be, oh, okay, well, I just wanted to bring it to your attention and then we could be done with it. But until we can get to that point where people don't automatically knee jerk react to someone saying, I have a problem, it'll continue to be a problem. How do we do that? It's the intention. My intention was to say, hey, I wanna educate you on what I felt was a problem. Your intention goes back to, that was not the intention of what was being done or said. So if somebody comes out and they have an issue, stay true to your intention. It goes back to the very first point. If you think before you go and you know what the intention was, stick true to your intention because they can't, they can't waver that. No matter how pissy or angry they are. Thank you, Marty. We've got about five more minutes um, for questions and then we are gonna hear from Mark. So if anyone has another question, you can put it in the chat or honestly, just feel free to unmute yourself as well. And here's all, I'm putting, I'm putting all my information in the uh, chat right now. Oh, perfect. It's for what I normally do. Um, so email, phone number and all that stuff. There I guess is. I kind of have a question for the group is the marketing campaigns that people are working on, are we focused on local marketing or national? And feel free to put in the chat or unmute yourself. I'm just kind of curious there. Okay, local. Local. Good. Is that local, is that local to Lane County or local? Probably Lane County. Okay. So um, PacWest Academy is trying to recruit locally and nationally. So how would you find how to uh, figure out what your focus audience is if you're trying to recruit local and national? Uh, you're, you're more niche because of what you're focusing on specifically, right? Because it's sports, it's athletes, it's like football, right? Right. So that is the focus group. Right. That's a focus group in itself. Okay, so it wouldn't be different um, trying to market to local versus national because it's Not the same focus it's, group. It would be the same focus group based on sports and athletes and football. Okay. Yeah. Good question, though. Marty, do you find that since Eugene is predominantly white, that um, people are feeling um, maybe? not knowledgeable about how to focus to um, diverse groups of people or uncomfortable or um, like what, what kind of roadblocks are you seeing from folks who say that they want to be diverse, but they're just not sure how to do it and what kind of resources exist to educate ourselves um, on this topic? Well, here's the thing, um, as far as uh, uncomfortableness and, um, Hesitation, yes, I have seen and I have heard. Um, resources, there's not a lot to be frank with you. Uh, I'm not gonna say that it's impossible to find, but a lot of it has to do with what can you do yourself, right? What kind of steps can you take? And they're not, it's not that difficult. Um, first, when it comes to just even just the matter of marketing and just advertising, let's just start there. Whenever I, I was doing my just, run of the mill marketing when I was back in Minneapolis. Anytime I went to do a spot or a commercial or anything like that, I would actually try just for the hell of it to find a person of color to put into a spot. Why? Because I knew Minneapolis was a diverse market. I knew that my customer probably would have a diverse audience coming into his market, coming into his business. I felt it would make sense to have somebody of color in that commercial. If your marketing people or who's ever doing that for you isn't thinking on that level, that's something you should be thinking about very heavily because if there are people that are doing marketing and advertising um, and they haven't been anywhere but Eugene, well, it, it makes it tough because the Pacific Northwest, as we know, isn't the most diverse area. You know, I mean, people, it's, it's, not by, it's not by anybody's fault, it's just by location, right? 
So the, the, the resource really kind of has to come from you. And then going into, uh, if anything, uh, minority owned businesses, finding, finding out, you know, what are their customer bases worth or not worth? What are they like? If you can, if you can partner with, find some uh, referral partners with minority owned businesses, see what their customer base is like, that would be an amazing thing to start happening. If I could see, I mean, I see it happening in bigger cities. I haven't seen it happen here, but that would be an amazing first step for, for Eugene and just for Lane County and Oregon proper. That would help out huge. That would take things to the next level. Well, that's a great way to end. We're right at time. We're going to hear from Mark next, but Marty, I just want to thank you for your presentation. We had the jam and music in the beginning. We had the video that I don't think any of us will be forgetting anytime <laughs> soon. And then you dropped a lot of really great knowledge today. Uh, so just a big round of applause for you. Thanks Thank for you. putting your contact information in the chat so folks can You get bet. It. Um, you bet. So That's my direct email too if anybody needs me. Perfect. Um, so I do want to bring on Mark. Um, Comcast Business is one of our um, partners that we work with. They are sponsoring this workshop. They also sponsor a number of other Onward programs. Um, and we're so lucky to work with Comcast. But I guarantee you're going to hear something new today that you didn't know that Comcast uh, did for our community. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mark. Hey, thank you very, very much. Appreciate it. And uh, I really love the presentation earlier. I won't remember everything about it. I'll remember a couple of things. I remember Marty's name, and I'll never forget that video, especially when he started skipping through to get to the point, and he gets to the point, and it was just as, as uh, impactful and meaningful as the rest of the video. We talked about, about how to really take diversity into consideration. I'll say this really quick because I got a couple minutes extra, but uh, if you think of all the innovation and successes, the, the growth in, in the world's economy, I think that happened uh, in a period of history when we as Americans, as humans, started to really value diversity in, in people. And I think uh, the explosion and everything when it comes to growth, innovation, I can track it back to that. And uh, if you want to think of the why we should really care about this, think about all the value that you, that you get through uh, understanding customers, getting their ideas and innovating either in your workforces and in, in the customer bases and in, uh, in the products that we sell. So I'm definitely 100% behind diversity and valuing it. Comcast Rise, if you can kind of uh, uh, listen to the the acronym RISE, meaning representation, investment, strength, empowerment. The reason for it is, is because, I guess, the pandemic happened. And even before the pandemic, supporting diversity in businesses and customers and our workforce has been an extremely important part of our value system, what we do. We've always done it. We, made, or we, we determined to make a, a huge investment in this earlier. But with the pandemic, we realized that uh, the biggest impact to small businesses happened to be with, with minority-owned businesses. Uh, if you think about it, uh, leading up to April 2020, 21% of all small businesses went away and couldn't survive. But if you dive a little bit deeper, 45% uh, of Black-owned businesses went away. A huge, huge impact. And if you continue down, uh, Latin-owned businesses, Asian-owned businesses, they continue to have this outsized impact from the pandemic, which really impacted their businesses, which is not a good thing for our economy. It's not a good thing for us uh, personally. And so we wanted to do what little we could to help. We can't do everything. We know we can't fix the problem, but doing something is really important to us. So this RISE program that I mentioned, and uh, if you want to learn more about it, please go to comcastrise.com, comcastrise.com. But uh, the reason for this is so we can elevate and support minority-owned or BIPOC-owned businesses 
And uh, what does it mean? Well, we're offering free of charge services, including uh, marketing support, uh, uh, advertising, we'll provide free advertising on our network of, of uh, uh, we have NBC, we have other local owned uh, stations. Uh, we'll help you to create an advertising spot. We'll also help by providing free equipment and services as part of a tech makeover. So huge value right there. It could be, depending on the business, it could be things like laptops, iPads, uh, free, whether it's uh, internet, voice services, uh, cybersecurity, we'll provide that for a year. And it's a, it's a huge benefit. And uh, you might wonder, how do you qualify? Well, it's gotta be a BIPOC owned business. Uh, I believe you have to be in operation for over a year. Can, it's a small business, so anywhere from one to a hundred employees. And uh, it's got to be registered to conduct business in the U.S. If you do know of any business that qualifies, please, please, please let them know that this is around. And uh, if you're curious about how to go about doing it, well, again, you go to compassrise.com. Uh, they can click in there and they can apply and just fill out the application process. And I won't be the one selecting, Comcast won't be the one selecting who it is. We want to make sure it's fair and impartial. We have a third party who goes through and selects the applicants. And we've had uh, three rounds of this to date. So each round basically matches uh, a couple of months in which you have time to apply. So this round is actually wrapping up on the 31st of July. This is the fourth round. It will be wrapping up on the 31st of July. So if you know anybody, let them know really quickly that they can apply. Fortunately, it's not the last round. So the next round starts again on August 1st. But just for, as an example, we'll announce the winners of this round four in September. And we'll announce the winners of the next round in, in November. So it kind of flows like that. And uh, really good, meaningful program. It's gonna drive uh, a lot of of uh, important growth and support for, for small businesses. Uh, I believe there is, a, there is a business in Eugene that has, has won one of our services. And uh, there are businesses all throughout our region. It's important that we, we are supporting people within our region. But within our footprint, if you know anybody within Comcast's footprint, and there's 40 states within Comcast's footprint, let them know. I've, I've spoken to many small business owners, and they were just so, so grateful. Uh, funny story, yesterday, there was somebody who won, and we had been trying to reach out to them and say, hey, you won free services, huge value. And they kept turning us down, and it, we couldn't figure out why they declined it. And so I reached out and called, up, called them up. I said, hey, what's going on? You're turning this down and you see, you're so apologetic. You thought it was a scam. And uh, we said, nope, it's not a scam. This is for real. And he said, this means so, so much to us as a business. And uh, I, I really do believe in it. And we'd love for you to be able to, to support. I, I believe in Eugene, there's one business. I think it's, and I'm going to butcher the name. It's Los... Patrios, I believe it's a, a Mexican uh, restaurant. It's one of three. The owner has a couple others in Vancouver, Washington. And uh, we want to increase the number in Eugene. So we really need your help to get the word out. And if you guys look in the chat, there are two different links. One um, from Ashley, she actually put the link to the Comcast Rise program. And two, if you look at maps, there's actually um, a link to the story about the restaurant and Teo, who owns the restaurant, or the very first Eugene winner. And I know we just passed lunch and you're probably hungry, so I'm going to warn you, there's a, a video of some sizzling fajitas, so you'll probably get hungry looking at it, um, but highly recommend uh, the restaurant visiting Teo and supporting him. Um, so Mark... Uh, thank you for that. Is there any quick questions for Mark about Comcast Rise? Hi, this is Alicia Adamson with Workbook Factory. Um, what is the requirement for BIPOCness? I'm, I'm HAPA, 
So in Hawaii, we call ourselves Hapa people. We're mixed, right? So if I'm part white, is that going to be okay? Or do you prefer uh, not to have mixed race people? No, 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 absolutely. Yeah, so, so uh, the requirements for BIPOC-owned businesses, and I guess you're familiar with that acronym, Black Indigenous People of Color. Uh, you think of African, African-American, which is uh, the first thing that comes to mind, but it could also include many other uh, racial minorities as well. So we'd love to have you apply for the program as well. Thank you. Great question, Alicia, thank you. Any other questions for Mark? Awesome, well, Mark, thanks for taking some time to talk to us today. Um, I know you're up in Portland, but anytime you're um, down in Eugene, we'd, we'd love to host you. If we have a restaurant we could go to, right? Um, we'll, have to go to we'll have to go together. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe we can have the next, the next, uh, meeting over there, we'll figure it out. Absolutely. Um, two last things before we wrap up today. Um, obviously huge thank you to both Mark and Marty. Um, this was really impactful and we of course um, just really appreciated both of you sharing um, and helping us move forward as, as we try to bring more diversity um, into marketing and, and learning uh, some great resources. Really quickly, once again, this workshop is put on by Onward Eugene. We are an economic development um, nonprofit, and we offer classes for entrepreneurs that are no cost, that um, are put on by our great sponsors. You can see those over my shoulder. And we have a pre-accelerator and an accelerator program. Whether you have a baby idea or you are already full-fledged um, into your startup, we want to be part of that journey. And so definitely reach out to me check out our um, owner website. Um, and the last thing I want to bring up today is I'm going to ask Cassie to talk really quick. The next thing you can go to is on August 11th. Cassie, can you tell us what that is? Yes, absolutely. As part of our equity, inclusion, and diversity efforts, we're having um, community conversations. And our next one um, is kind of a fun play on the game, Never Have I Ever. And so we'll have Damian Pitts with the University of Oregon. And it's going to be, again, an interactive activity where we self-reflect and find ways to identify and move past our own biases. So it's going to be really fun. Damian's a great speaker, and we look forward to having everyone join us. I dropped a link in the chat if you want to learn more and, and come. Perfect. Thanks, Cassie. I'll be sending out an email, um, and if anyone wants uh, Marty's slides, I will be including that. You can also, of course, contact him directly. Keep these conversations going. That's what this is all about. Uh, find each other on LinkedIn. Um, ask each other for a Zoom date, coffee date, whatever it takes to build your network. Keep talking about this um, subject. It's really important, and keep advancing your own knowledge. So thank you so much to Marty. Thank you so much, Mark. Marty, any, any parting words? Uh, can I say one thing? I'd like to yeah. actually offer this up to anybody as well. I do a weekly Facebook show called Today's Talk with Marty G. It's like a 15, 20 minute show that I run. I'll put a link in the chat as well. If anybody would like to be featured, you get like a 20 minute little video you can also use for your own marketing efforts as well. It doesn't cost you anything. I just do it because it's fun. Caitlin's done it. She can tell you how painful it is. It, it was going pretty smoothly till he threw three questions my way that I wasn't prepped for. And the hardest one was, what movie was a great first one and a terrible sequel? And I gotta tell you guys, that stopped me for a few minutes until I finally figured out the answer, which was The, the Sandlot. Sandlot. I didn't know. Never watch The Sandlot 2, total waste of time. <laughs> Okay, with that, um, I want to say thank you all for taking the time to be here today. We're right at our ending time. Um, I hope I see you all again. I hope that I get some new connections from this group. And thank you again for being here. It looks like someone agreed with me about Sandlot too. I'll take it. <laughs> thank Have you. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>